After coming off one of the hottest finishes in college golf, the Ole Miss Rebels head to Cabo and take one of their toughest tests thus far. Led by a core of talented upperclassmen, the men's golf team takes to the course to prove their tenacity and continue their meteoric rise to the top. We are headed to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, paradise. It's great. It's a little cold here this morning, but when we get there, I think it'll be 70 degrees and sunny, so can't wait. We're headed right now to Houston, and then Houston to Cabo. All right. Who do you think is going to be the best dressed on the trip? Me for sure. I'm gonna see my hat. Welcome to the beautiful morning here in Houston. Thanks for a wonderful flight. And we do look forward to flying with you all again. Right now we're in Houston, Texas. Flying out to Cabo for the final destination. It's been a great week. Right now, we're just road repping, baby. What are you most looking forward to about Cabo? Oh man, the golf course is pretty good, but waking up every day to the sunrise is definitely the best part, no doubt. After a day of travel, the rebels stopped to fuel up with some authentic Mexican cuisine before hitting the course for some practice. Goes into a good taco. Um, some love. <laughs> Coach Malloy's love. Taco is worthless if it doesn't have green sauce on it. Yeah, no, chicken first. Let me do a little little cucumber. Tacos. Uh huh. Cucumbers are good. I don't know why. I only like cucumbers with the beef tacos. I need to of the lime. I'm a simple guy. You know, just chicken, a little green sauce, a little lime. That was Yeah, that's good. Part two on why the food is so good in Mexico. Hot dogs. Everything there is. Everything. Amigo. Um, uh, name, what is it from school? Home. Wow, bien. Éxito. Perfecto. Bien.
All right, guys. Do whatever you need to do. Let's get out of here. Good, good job today. Even you, Chip. My hips are like excessively tight. I don't know why. I'm gonna blame my sprint down the hill yesterday trying to save the golf ball from flying into the desert. My hat's gone. Disciple, God. Doesn't understand. Yeah, he's got it. I think he took my hat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, that, I don't think you ever took it off. You only take my stuff. That's the <laughs> that was good. And with the twirl on the range, what happened to the no twirl on the range rule? That's what we want. I would never let Cecil know, but I'm kind of a fan of the classic rock on the range. That's not what we want. You know, Moss. All right. Start on 14. Sure. Sure. <laughs> what it looks like. All right, gentlemen, if we can all head to our carts. The uh, ninth and 10th holes are about a 10 minute drive from here, so we want to get everybody out there on time, ready to go. First round, it's always important to, you know, get off to a good start, or at least a decent start. You can't win it on the first day, but you can definitely lose it. If, you know, you shoot yourself out of the tournament on the first day, it kind of puts a damper on the next two rounds. How far do you have to the hole? I think it's 247 hole, maybe 252. Coach Malloy's presence always, and on course, is just very, you know, focused. Usually it's all business. Usually, you know, you're discussing what you want to do with this shot. My only deal with this too, that pin's up front. I don't love a wedge into that hole. So you'd rather get it up yeah, I'd rather a little bit closer. closer yeah. But he does have a really good way of taking your mind off golf. Life's good. Life does not suck. No. It's always good to have someone to talk to on the course, uh, reassuring your numbers and reassuring the game plan that we're trying to do. Honestly, 132 to 135 was what I was going to say. And right at it. Yeah, it's perfect club. Go. Get it up. Knock that in. Yeah, good shot. That was pure. Damn. Okay, okay, let's go. We try to keep it relaxed as much as possible. Like I said, it's golf. You got about 105? 22. Bad layup. This is not where I wanted it. <laughs> okay. Mic'd up. Don't say anything, don't say anything incriminating. Yeah, quit talking about the bad stuff. Quit talking about all the birdies you're making. They're quick to hit a bad shot and moan about it and, and uh, you know, kind of complain. Well, look over your shoulder, man. There's a mountain over there and, and, and the Sea of Cortez is right out in front of you. I mean, look at those whales jumping. It's a cool spot to just to go see and if you keep a relaxed, uh, you know, and a good positive, you know, outlook on, on their games. Doesn't matter if their golf games are good or not. You know, the attitude is one thing they can control. 15 to 18 shot, probably. It's probably playing the number making at it. I mean, it's not terrible to be behind it. That a boy. Really nice. Good two-putt. Right. Gary is one of the most high-strung energy guys I've, I've ever been around. He, he's a lot of fun to to, to be around. You know, he's, he brings a ball of energy every, every day to the golf course. Oh, please go. Go hard. Go! Ooh, saucy. I mean, the game of golf is just, it has its ups and downs, but, and that's the beauty of the game, you know. Some days you just absolutely hate it and you don't know what to do with it. 
for him. And then some days you just love it and you can't get away from it. He's as solid of a guy as, as they get. He's really a rock for our program. Uh, he's very high energy. He runs usually before any round. He's got that little bit of a crazy streak to him. All right, heads up. I have no idea where this might go. I would say he's just a competitor. I mean, and you know, in Juco, he won the national championship and player of the year, so he knows how to win. I don't look at those awards or achievements as anything. I just try to improve myself daily and just do what I can to make myself a little bit better. He very quickly became a vocal leader. He very quickly became the guy that gave everybody energy every day, you know, practice day in and day out. And I get it, we're playing an individual game, um, but at the end of the day, we are a team. And, you know, for him to have that consistency that he brings each and every day, listen, not, not only for our team, but for him in life, is really, it's really gonna pay off for him. He is a good team leader, he does the right things, he works hard, so that's all you can ask for a senior, he does the right things. We look up to him and I'm glad we have him. I think without Carey, we, the team would not have matured nearly as well over the last uh, year and a half. He's definitely helped the younger guys and set an example, especially, I mean, with how much positive energy he brings. And we all just kind of use him as a, a role model for that positivity. The best thing I can do as, as a senior is just do the right things. He's just maturing, you know, and, and you can see it a little bit, you know, when when he's around the guys or the team. As I've come here and as I've gone through my two years, I've mentally become a stronger athlete and I've mentally become a better person. And um, I think Coach Moy and Coach Ellis have really taught me a lot about not just the game of golf, but life and how it's gonna um, develop and how it evolves into better things. And it's how you look at it. And um, you know, I think Ole Miss and everything Ole Miss has done for me and the golf program here has just absolutely changed my life. So I'm, I'm truly grateful for it. The Carencia Cabo Collegiate features one of college golf's most star-studded fields, with 12 nationally ranked programs in the 15-team field, a challenge the Ole Miss golf program embraces with a full swing. It's good knowing and seeing what other teams do when you're in that type of field and knowing how they go about their business versus ours and what we can learn about that. Yeah, we need to be prepared for the national championship, so you need to put yourself in, in situations where you're going to be playing teams that are better than you. Putting ourselves in that type of uh, in that type of field will definitely get us better in the long run when it comes to uh, knowing what we have to accomplish. You know, what Coach Malloy has done since he's been here has just been so big and, uh, you know, given us the opportunities to play at somewhere like Cabo where it's, you know, like you said, roughly, you know, the NCAA field because it's, you know, there's probably 15 teams that are in the top 50 out there and it's just really kind of is a preview for what you're going to see later in the season. Listen, we want to win a national championship and you hear it all the time to to beat the best you have to play the best and these guys wouldn't have it any other way and the evolution of our program you know, since we've been here I think the first couple of years you know our our program would look at a field like this and be a little bit in awe you know this group of guys and and the group of guys will be here next year the year after um, listen they're, they're disappointed if they don't win. Carencia Country Club's desert proved to add an extra wrinkle for Coach Malloy's group. Plus it's really windy, the tee shots are really intimidating, but you just kind of have to overcome that, not really look at it, just look at center fairway and swing freely. In this one there's fairway about a yard of rough and then desert. In desert you're either going to lose it or you're going to take it unplayable and it's pretty much a one or two shot penalty. Like Coach said, you're going to hit it. I think it's my first desert ball like yeah. that I actually had taken take an unplayable. And you're up there and you know if you hit one in the desert or something you just go oh yeah I have to re-hit another one because you just lose it. Yeah you're gonna get a little scared at times. You can't have any big misses so that's kind of you kind of hone your swing in to where you don't over swing and kind of just keep it in play. The course even caused problems for defending national champion Braden Thornberry. I mean is it not just exactly like a sprinkler head because it is sprinklers what Roger said. I'm gonna to break that hose too. Yeah, I would just leave it. That's what I was thinking. I think you drop. I think you take your relief first. I, man, I'm 100% sure you're getting relief out of that. Yeah, so I was on number seven out there. I hit it just right in the desert, but it wasn't, you know, a huge deal. I was about 110 out, and uh, but I was up against a bush, which was gonna be, you know, a real problem. I was either gonna to have to take an unplayable or just try to hack it out to the fairway. But uh, I noticed there was kind of a you know a sprinkler hose little wire thing that came out and uh, 
I was like, you know, that's probably the same ruling as like a sprinkler head being there. How's it going? Up against the hose and the hose won't really move. So like, did you get relief from that? Yeah, it's a... It's, it's a just like a sprinkler head, yeah. right? Yep. So the nearest point right there. You got it. So what I would do is I'd mark it. Go ahead and get the club and again drop it nearest point. Luckily, was able to, you know, drop it out of the bush and that was kind of a nice little break for me. Down. The challenges didn't stop when the rebels walked off the greens. See, uh, es Domino's Pizza? Sí, uh, una orden para llevar, por favor. Uh, ¿Cómo está? Sí. I can't hear what you're This isn't going to work. ¿Está bien las cosas? ¿Buenas tardes? Una orden para llevar. Bueno. Sí, uh, dos pizzas de pepperoni. Oh, call failed. Coach, you're... You gotta enable Wi-Fi calling. I don't have confidence in my ability anymore because he was speaking very fast, but we're gonna try. Si, sí, uh, escúchame ahora. Si, sí, uh, perfecto. Uh, una orden para llevar. Si. Sí? Si, sí, uh, dos pizzas de pepperoni. Uh, una pizza de suprema. Si, sí? una pizza de uh, uh, muchas carnes. Gracias. Sí, hasta luego. I think he said, uh, I think he said 45 minutes. I think he said una hora menos. I was no, impressed. Well, he, I was impressed. I think, okay, so I said Kyle, and then I said Ellis, and I spelled Ellis, and he said, okay, Kyle. I was like, yeah. So one of the two, Kyle or Ellis, and I think we'll be all right. I give it subpar if we're speaking golf terms, which... Well, that's good, then. That's no, good. So I, I, I don't think it's very good. Golf. I don't think it's good. I mean, okay, we I roll think... in here. We're four or five Mississippians. We think we know and understand the world. Then we just get slapped in the face with how Mexico about? really works. It's just okay. the way it is. Right. All I'm saying is if, <laughs> if, if, look, if we get three pepperoni pizzas, one supreme, and one meat lover back okay, at this no, house it's in the not, next no. hour, why I would we do that? No, I ordered, ordered a specific pizza. What did you order? Did I know? ordered a pineapple and ham. Did. It's not even coming you to the door. You did not give me that no, in the you order. Didn't, you didn't give then there's a bad, there, there's bad communication, which I actually think it goes to the translator. So bad Spanish. I am proud of myself. I think I'm not mistaken. We have three pepperonis, one supreme, and two quarters. Good stuff. On day three of the tournament, the Rebels look to bounce back from their day in the desert. The driving force behind the Rebels' final day in paradise would be the calming nature of assistant coach Kyle Ellis. We're out there, it's kind of cool having Coach Ellis because his attitude's so good, so he'll walk up to me like, Gare Bear, how you doing out there? I'm like, hey coach, how's it going? I'm like, I'll just come off like a double bogey or something, I'll be like, man, I'm short putt or whatever, get all upset. I go, Gare Bear, how you doing out there? I'm like, I'm doing pretty good, thanks for asking. You know, my day's alright. How you hanging in there? Uh, I'm playing well, I'm not gonna even. Cool. Playing a lot better than I'm sure. I like it, that, that little, that shorter palm just left of the hole. You like that? Yeah. Nip it in there. Yeah, good shot. Put the last. Pound it to the right. Hit four iron right. Hit the path. Which is kind of unlucky, but 
whatever. I don't know, in the desert. What do you make there? It's fine. I just hang in there. Perfect number. Yeah. Good number. Come. Hang in there. All right. Is there... Good shot. Well, anyone that's that's had a chance to be around Coach Ellis realizes he's never had a bad day. Not only does the coaching staff instill a positive mindset into the Rebel squad, they ensure they're playing at the best courses college golf has to offer. Since I've been in school, we've been to you know, Cabo, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, all that cool stuff. So that's really, I don't think a lot of schools can say that. You know, I'll be, you know, someone will play with me from a different school and I'll be like, you know, where have you guys been this week or, you know, this season? And they're like, ah, you know, Mobile, Alabama, that kind of things. Which, you know, those are good tournaments, but it's it's nothing like going out of the country to compete. One of the most rewarding things that that you see is getting to take you know guys to places that they've never been, that they never imagined being. You know, you get them to enjoy it, um, get them to have as much of a you know positive you know outlook that week as as possible. But it, it's certainly one of the you know most rewarding parts of the year is getting to a place like that. It's just kind of surreal, honestly. I mean. Especially, I, this is my second year at Cabo, and you just, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's an every year thing, and it, it's, we're just spoiled. I mean, that's, we're very, very lucky um, to be able to do that and have that opportunity. Hey, thank you. Very good. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, damn. I'm gonna see right when you show up the one drop kick. You mic'd up? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. All these kids want to be on reality, sh reality shows these days. What better way to do it than Cabo? <laughs> <laughs>